In this video, I'm gonna show you a number of things. I'm gonna show you how to get Kali Linux downloaded and installed and running within WSL version two, running within Windows 10. I'm gonna show you how to download applications such as Nmap so that you can check for open ports on devices. But in addition, I'm gonna show you how to get the graphical user interface installed and running on Kali so that you can manage the Kali Linux device running within WSL version two using remote desktop. So rather than just getting a CLI, which is the default that you'll get when you install Kali on WSL version two, I'll show you how to get a graphical user interface installed and running. Okay, let's get started. Now in this video, I am doing everything on this Windows 10 laptop. I'm controlling the Windows 10 laptop using VNC from my Mac, but I'm actually doing everything on this Windows 10 laptop. On the Kali or Kali Linux website, they discuss using WSL version two with Kali, and they say that Kali Linux has had support for WSL version one for some time, but it was somewhat limited, especially with regards to networking. WSL version one had problems with speed, specifically input output, which were problematic. The reason why is that in WSL version one, they were using a translation layer between Linux and Windows 10. So there was sort of this translation layer translating system calls between Linux and Windows 10. Now, however, they're using virtualization technologies, so it's a lot better in WSL version two versus WSL version one. However, they are still investigating how useful it is. But what I'm gonna show you now is how to get this up and running. It's very simple to get Kali Linux up and running on a Windows 10 computer. Okay, so on my Windows 10 laptop, I'm gonna to go to the Microsoft Store. I'm gonna search for Kali. And notice this entry, Kali by Offensive Security. I'm gonna click on that. And I'm gonna click Get. And I'm gonna click Install. Kelly is downloading, it's about 185 meg in size. I'm gonna click launch to start the installation. We can see that it's now been installed. We asked to create a default Linux user account. This doesn't have to be the same as my Windows username. So I'm gonna simply call this Kelly and set the password as Kelly. So in other words, this is similar to the default username and password that you get if you download the pre-built virtual machine from Kali. Okay, so there you go, it's installed. So lsb underscore release dash A, we told that that command doesn't exist. Let's go uname dash A. We can see that we're using Linux on my Asus laptop. I could also try cat etsy os release. And as you can see there, Pretty name is Kelly, Linux rolling. I can see that the version is 2020.2. Okay, I'll clear the screen. Can I ping a device in my physical network? This is a Cisco router. I need to use sudo to run that command. So I'll put my password in and notice I can ping a Cisco device from within this virtual machine running within WSL version two. I'll start PowerShell and notice WSL-L-V shows me that I've got Kali Linux running and I've also got Ubuntu virtual machines running. So in other words, this Kali Linux virtual machine is running within WSL on my Windows 10 computer. Okay, let's do a sudo apt update to update references. So Kali is now connecting to the internet and making sure that the references are updated. I could upgrade software, but I'm simply gonna use the command sudo apt install nmap to install nmap on this Kali Linux host. So now I have nmap installed and I could use that to check devices on my network. Okay, so let's use nmap to check the ports on my Cisco router. This is a physical Cisco router in my network. So let's paste that in and check which ports are open on that router. We can see that Nmap is running. Okay, so it's run a check against that router. We can see a whole bunch of ports are opened, including charging. Now you typically wouldn't enable that on a Cisco router. 
I enabled charging and other ports on the Cisco router for this demonstration. So as an example, on my Cisco router, I enabled the TCP small servers. You don't typically enable that. So you wouldn't typically do that. So what I'll do on my Windows computer is open up a CMD prompt. So this is traditional CMD. I'll make this Kali Linux window bigger. So on my Windows computer, if I tell net to the router on port 19, notice we get a whole bunch of characters. So that's character generation on a Cisco router. That's again, something that you don't typically enable. It's not a good idea. So I'll close that. So you can see charging is open. We can see SSH is open using Cisco SSH 1.25. We can see that Telnet is enabled, not a great idea for security reasons. So once again, I could Telnet to that router and I'd be able to log in to the router. It's not a good idea to use Telnet because it's all in clear text. But as you can see, a whole bunch of services are opened on that router and Nmap has been able to discover that for me. So I'm once again using Nmap within Kali Linux on my Windows 10 laptop. Now this only currently has a CLI. You may want to run a GUI. In other words, get a GUI version of Kali running. So let's do that. Okay, so to do that, I'm simply gonna install some software. So install XFCE and then I'll install XRDP. So we can see that the first installation is taking place. Now I'll speed up the installation because it takes a while. Okay, so I wanna use US English and the software is now installed. Okay, so now that that's installed, I'll install XRDP. Say yes to install the software. Same thing happens, software is downloaded and installed. And what I'll do is start the XRDP service. So that's now started. And what I should be able to do is start remote desktop. So start remote desktop connection. What IP address am I gonna to connect to? So IP address on the Kali Linux host shows me that the IP address is this. So 172. 18.108.119. I'm told that the identity of the remote device cannot be verified. I'm okay with that. I'm gonna say yes to connect. And notice I'm presented with an RDP session. So I can now log in as Kali. Kali, the username and password that I configured. I'll click okay. And notice I now have Kali Linux running within an RDP session on my Windows 10 computer. So I'm connecting to my Kali Linux host. There's the IP address once again, 172.18.108.119, or to use the more modern command, IP address. There's my IP address of my Kali Linux host running within RDP on Windows 10. So I'll close my remote session. So once again, I've got Kali Linux running within WSL version two. Here's the CLI version. I'll use ifconfig old command. There's the IP address. And what I can do is once again, use remote desktop to connect to that device. And once again, manage it through the GUI. So by using these commands, I can now connect to the Kali Linux host using remote desktop and manage it through the GUI. Okay, so in this video, I showed you how to get Kali Linux up and running within WSL version two. I showed you how to install applications such as Nmap, and I've also shown you how to install a GUI on Kali so that you can manage the Kali Linux host running within WSL version two using remote desktop. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video, and please click on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal, and I wanna wish you all the very best. Yeah.